Hey, today I'm going to be planting the seed of the Kentucky coffee tree. So when I was growing up as a kid in Norway, we would learn all about the different trees, plants, and animals that exist natively to Norway. And similarly, when I was studying urban design in the Netherlands, we had a course called Urban Landscape, where we learned all about the different plants and trees that they would grow in Dutch cities. However, when I moved to Canada, I didn't really have that same formal opportunity to learn about the native species that grow here. And so I've gone all this time, lived here for over a decade without really knowing what the different trees and plants it is that I see outside when I'm walking the streets or I'm in the forest. Some of them are comparable to European species, but then again, there are others that are not. So when I discovered that there was a workshop being held about the trees in my neighborhood, I got really excited and signed up. This workshop was held by an organization called Green Thumbs. They work with local schools to help teach kids in a very hands-on way about trees and plants that are native to this region. And so they've decided to bring that knowledge to a wider audience which is how this workshop was available to me. We got a walkthrough in the local park outside in my neighborhood, where we were introduced to different species of trees that were planted in that park. And so we got to learn their names, where they're planted, uh, what makes them special, and how we can identify them in the wild. And the really cool thing about this workshop was that there was a part two where they gave all participants these seed kits so that we could plant a Kentucky coffee tree together uh, and, and learn about how, in fact, to plant the Kentucky coffee tree seed because it's a very special seed that requires very special conditions to start growing in the soil. Another really neat thing that they did during the workshop was that they tried to use the native Anishinaabe names as much as possible. Whenever they knew the name of the tree in Anishinaabe, they would use them. Bijou Atig. Bijou Atig. I hope I'm saying it correctly. Atig meaning tree in Anishinaabe. And Bijou means cat's claw, which is in reference to the seed pod that grows on the tree that is a large dark pod and is kind of shaped like a cat's claw. So that's where the name comes from, which is kind of neat. Okay, so here we have the seed kit that I received from Green Thumbs. It has a couple of things in it, sandpaper, popsicle stick, some soil in a bag, and the seed itself. All right, so what we learned during the workshop was that we have to prepare the seed so that it can start growing. It won't just start growing if you put this into the soil because the seed coat is so hard, it is pretty much impervious. This can probably survive out in the wild probably thousands of years. What it requires is for some animal, and there's a theory that there was the mastodon that used to walk these parts of the world. They used to love eating these guys, and when they ingested it and when it went through their digestive system, by the time it came out again, it would have incurred a whole bunch of scars on the seed coat, which would then allow the embryo on the inside to access oxygen and water to then start growing. So what we're going to do here is to simulate that process of digesting like the mastodon did. There's a little branch here. I'm gonna call this the umbilical cord of the seed. And this is not what you want to sand. What you want to sand is kind of like the bottom of the seed. 
I'm going to use the very rough sandpaper here and start sanding. Okay, so there's still no sign of the embryo. It should be a much lighter color that peeks through the seed coat. We are still sanding just the seed coat. Okay, next visual inspection. You can actually see a little bit of a brighter tint of something emerging from behind the seed coat. Right, so finally you can see that the embryo has emerged from behind the seed coat. In this state, it'll finally be able to access water and oxygen, stuff that it needs in order to start growing. We're actually not going to put it in the soil immediately. What we're first going to do is to soak the seed for 24 hours before putting it into the soil. I've already been soaking another seed because we actually received two seeds from green thumbs. And so the second seed has been soaking in water for a little bit less than 24 hours, but you can see that the embryo is starting to emerge a little bit more. The, the seed coat is unraveling a little bit around the embryo and you can tell that something is starting to awaken inside the seed, which is really, really exciting. So we're going to put the soil in the container. And about two inches into the soil, we're gonna make a hole. And we were told to plant the seed with the scarred part. So the part where the embryo is showing up, pointing downwards. So I'm going to do that. Put it in there. And then cover it up. And the last thing we're going to do is to water it. Actually, I'm mistaken. It's not the last thing we're going to do, but it's certainly a very important part of what we're going to do. And the last thing we're going to do is to write the label of the planted tree here. So, so we learned that the Anishinaabe name for it is Bijou Atik. I'm going to write that here. So there we go. Here's the little marker. Put in our pot. And now we wait patiently for the seed to start growing and after approximately three years we will have the opportunity to plant this tree out in the wild or out in the city somewhere and that is going to be a really exciting milestone. And finally thank you so much Bohema and Sunday from Green Thumbs for offering this workshop to us. That workshop was part of a larger project that's happening in Regent Park called um, Our Neighborhood Project. You can look it up if you Google Everyone Every Day Toronto and you can find more of these workshops uh, that cover other different things. And also a big special thanks to Denise from the Center of Social Innovation, who is the program manager for all these different workshops that are being held in the Regent Park neighborhood. But just to wrap it up here, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.